We all know from previous experience that in order to solve an equation, you've got to get the variable isolated. In other words, get it by itself. Unfortunately, the one that we have right now is an example of a variable who is not isolated. So we can't figure out exactly how much this x weighs. In other words, how many little units over here would balance him out because he's not hanging out over here by himself. He's got company. So we've got to get rid of that plus three that is hanging out with him right now. And we're going to get rid of that plus three by using a little process called inverse operations. Okay, inverse is a fancy word for opposite. And we know that the word operations actually refers to a number of different things. There's more than what I'm about to say. But the ones we're the most familiar with are like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. These are the only ones we're going to worry about right now. So when we say inverse operations, we mean the operations that are the opposite of each other. So of course, addition and subtraction are inverses. Multiplication and division are inverses. So in order to get rid of this 3 that's just hanging out here with my x, I have to do the opposite, because okay? in order to get that 3 over there, that involves addition, which we can see right here over on the paper portion of my problem. I've got a paper version to go along with the balance beam, because of course, in real life, we're not going to get to use the balance beam very often. More often than not, we're going to be using paper. So because this is x plus 3, I am going to use the inverse of a of adding 3 to get rid of that 3. Of course, the opposite or inverse of plus 3 is a minus 3, which I'm going to show here on my paper. So that is a plus 3 that I am taking away. So in order to model that I'm taking it away over here on the balance beam, I'm simply going to yank them off there. 1, 2, and 3. So on paper, x plus 3, I have taken away that plus 3 by using the opposite, which is a minus 3. And all I am left with is simply the x, because that plus 3 and minus 3 kind of cancel each other out, right? Because they're opposites. And that makes sense. Over here on my problem, I've got just an x left by itself. I also have an x just left by itself over here on my model. But... In case you haven't noticed already, I'm sure you have, there's an issue with our balance beam because now it's out of balance, which defeats the entire purpose of having an equation in the first place. So we have to use a concept that is called the properties of equality in order to finish solving this equation. Properties of equality is basically just a fancy way of saying that when you have an equation, you have to do the same thing to both sides in order to keep it equal. And this balance beam is a perfect example of what we're talking about. Because right now, I subtracted 3 from one side of my balance beam, and now it's out of whack because I did not subtract 3 from both sides of the balance beam. This would be an example, what we're doing right now, of the subtraction property of equality, because what we're going to do now is go back and subtract from both sides of the equal sign. So we already subtracted 3 from the left-hand side, so now we are going to take away or subtract 3 from the right side. I just threw away those little 3 on there, so voila, now our equation is back into balance. If I were doing it on paper, I would just add the minus 3 underneath the 8 because the 8 is what's on the right-hand side. So I've got 8 minus 3, which is, of course, 5. And then, of course, my equal sign, which is right there in the middle, needs to stay right here in the middle. So x is equal to 5, and that is supported by the fact that I've got an x in both spots, x on the left side of my balance beam, x on the left side of my equation, and that is perfectly balanced with five little units, five little units. So I know that x is equal to five, and I figured that out by using the opposite operation that goes with the variable. So now let's do another example. This time we have the equation 2x is equal to eight. And even though we only have x's on the left side of the equation, they are still not isolated because those two x's aren't alone, right? They've each got a little buddy with them. So we are going to have to use inverse operations again to get them by themselves to get them 
isolated. But here's the problem. We can't just subtract, and I am getting ready to do something wrong right now. A lot of people think that to get rid of this 2 that is with the x, you would simply subtract 2 from that side of your equation. But here's the problem. 2 is not the same thing as 2x's. We don't have 2 that we can take away over here on the left side of our balance beam. All we have over here is x's. So if we take away an x, okay, that would be all right, but we don't have any x's that we can take away over here. An x and a 1 is not the same thing. So in order to be able to use subtraction, we would have to be able to take away exactly the same thing from both sides, and we can't do that because we've got x's on one side, we've got little units or numbers on the other side. So what are we going to do instead of subtraction? We are going to use division. And here is another reason, aside from the fact that I can't subtract, here's another reason that I know why. I remember from previous years of school that whenever you have a number sitting next to a variable, like this 2 is sitting next to the x, that that is another way to represent multiplication besides just using the little multiplication symbol. Okay, so this means 2 times x. So we've already established that to solve an equation, we have to use inverse operations, in other words, opposites, to get something by itself. And if this is multiplication, then the inverse or opposite of multiplying is division. And because we are in algebra land, we're not going to use a little division symbol like this to represent division. Okay, we are going to use a fraction bar because that's what we use to represent division in algebra. So I'm going to put a line underneath there to represent division. So I have two x's. I'm going to divide it by 2, because again, the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. So if I have two x's and then I split them up, if I divide them up into groups, I'm going to have get rid of that 2. I'm going to have 1x left over. Now again, we are bound by the properties of equality. So basically, I just cut the left side of my equation in half. Let me give you a little visual of what that would look like here. It's kind of like I took a little chopping block and I just chopped those two x's in half. So that I got one x over, now they're, they're divided up. They're not together anymore. So two x's divided by two would leave me with 1x left over in each group. Well, if I'd split up the left side of my balance beam, remember that little thing we talked about, those properties of equality, I'm not doing the subtraction property of equality anymore. This time I'm going to be using the division property of equality because I divided up the left side of my balance beam. So now I've got to divide up in half the right side of my balance beam. So because I divided the left side by 2, I have to divide the right side by 2. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. I'm going to place my little equal sign right there in the middle. x is equal to 4. And I'm going to prove it over here on my balance beam again. I'm going to divide up the left side of my balance beam here. So I have 1x in the top. So if I split this side in half, I'm going to have to split this side in half. And then look, 1x matches up with 1, 2, 3, 4 little units, and this x matches up with 1, 2, 3, 4 unit, little units. So 2x's divided by 2 results in 4 and 4. So 2x equals 8. If you cut both sides in half, that's going to leave you with x is equal to 4. So I know that I've got the equation correct.